Om. In this session, we will explore the purpose of yoga and meditation. Different motivation, why people are practicing. There's two main attitudes which we can differentiate. On the one hand, they are separate from each other and quite opposite. But on the other hand, they are, of course, in reality, also overlapping in many ways and are going also hand in hand with each other together. What are those two attitudes? One of them is related to this very widespread attitude and approach towards self-development, self-improvement, upgrading and in a way feeling good. The wellness industry is huge and fair enough. We have so much trouble, so many obstacles, and we very much deserve to feel good, to enjoy ourselves, to relax after all the stress. So coming down after being hyped up and cultivating this relaxation, this well-being in body and mind is so valuable and so crucial and a valuable counterbalance to the mainstream mindset of hyperintensity and everybody being stressed out and even burned out. We need to counterbalance this hyperactivity with some relaxation. Uh, so that is in a way part of the self-care, um, but in a way almost also part of self-development. I have to learn to relax in order to be able to perform better. That's also how companies would approach mindfulness in corporations in California, countries like Germany and others. This mindful movement is huge. Mindfulness is the name of the game. Why are corporations promoting it so strongly? Because they know it helps people to not burn out. If their staff is burning out, it's trouble for the company because the human resources are wasted. They are fried up and then they need to hire somebody new in this higher and fire mentality training again. And it's a loss for them. They, you know, they experience a brain drain. They want to maintain their human resources in good condition. And that's why they offer mindfulness programs not necessarily only that the workers and staff is happy, happy and enjoy themselves, but also for utilitarian interest that they then, after their mindfulness training, perform better, that their results in the output, in the profit making of corporations is higher. So we got to be honest and realistic about that. Fair enough. It's better than just burning out the staff. We appreciate it. And I'm very supportive of companies jumping on the mindfulness bandwagon. But we got to see that this purpose is more you know, kind of output oriented, result focused on this corporate level, which is maybe not so tangible directly for you. But if you observe your own attitude with which you approach the yoga and the meditation practice, it might be somewhat similar. It's kind of, I do this to get that, the result orientation. So common, so widespread, so human, so normal and fair enough, of course. You go to the gym to look a bit more smooth and sweet and propped up. Why not? It's okay. Very normal. We all have it, some kind of beauty things and oh, whatever. I still have this obsession of pulling out some of these first gray hair in my beard and a bit foolish, childish. Okay, we smile at ourselves and maybe you buy some anti-wrinkle cream for your eyelids or something. Okay, so sure, it's normal, it's human. It's okay, but frequently we get a bit too obsessed with it. We overdo it. I know we gotta go seven times per week to the gym and otherwise I'm gonna have a little bit of a weight here and it's too much uh, fat here and this obsessive compulsive like ah paranoia about imperfections of our body and there's kind of too much goal orientation you know, constantly checking the scale, measuring the size of the muscles, checking myself in the mirror and Sure, it's normal, it's human, it's widespread. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not putting it down. I'm not judging it. That's not the point. I'm just describing the motivation. Why are we doing things? 
It matters. It changes the meaning of our action. It makes a difference why we are engaging into something because it changes the attitude. Are we coming to yoga and meditation with this goal orientation? Do we have always this kind of fixation of achieving, reaching, accomplishing success story and then the next success? Do we take this success personal or can we see that it's actually just a flow of life through us coming in rhythms, in seasons, in waves, where we go from zero to hero and back? from failure to success and back. Sometimes we have a good day in the gym or in the yoga class, other times not so. And that's okay. But do we judge ourselves? Do we beat ourselves up for not being good enough? How do we practice asana? Can we observe a frustration in ourselves? <clears throat> still not being flexible enough, still not able to touch my fingers, my hands behind my back, or still more, better. How much frustration is there in our asana practice? Observing that tendency, also that in a non-judgmental way. Not judging our judgmentalism. <laughs> That's a vicious circle. So zooming out, stepping back and seeing like, aha, that's why I'm kind of engaging and being motivated. So what to do? What can we do? The second attitude of the practice is the detachment. So we counterbalance our goal achieving, reaching attitude with this letting go with this attitude of allowing things to be as they are. Relaxing into a limitation. Because maybe due to an old injury or due to some limitation in my body type, it's just completely out of my reach to ever go to that seemingly important goal which society creates which my yoga peers in the studio are kind of putting as the standard. And I feel bad that I'm not up to this level, which I get constantly splashed in my face in Instagram and other social media channels of like this idealized, perfect yogini with a branded, fancy, latest, fashionable clothes with the most contortionistic, acrobatic posture. Looks beautiful, aesthetically pleasing. Again, nothing wrong with it. It's not about negatively judging that. But how much are we judging ourselves for not being there yet? Not having this amazing level of flexibility, of being able to put both feet behind the head. Is it a reason to feel bad about our yoga practice? Can we detach? Let go from this striving, goal-reaching, this pushy attitude to accomplish. Are we able to detach? Can we allow ourselves to not take everything personal? Why do we feel bad about something? Is it really appropriate? Does it help me? Does it give me fulfillment? Does it make this yoga practice harmonious and a space where I can recharge? Or is it just another episode of running after carrots dangling in front of my head as in the educational system, as in my career on the job, as in sports, as in another competitive, competitive exercise, this or that. And in yoga, again, trying to be the best. Running after some imaginary goal. Can we let go of this endless hamster wheel, tiring, running around? hyperactive achievement mindset. Can we observe this tendency arising 
due to repetition, conditioning, due to this strong influence of the surroundings of people, society, parents, peers, friends, brothers. Can we observe this tendency? How it is arising due to these conditionings in ourselves? And then at least occasionally step back a little bit and detach and see the tendency for what it is but rather sooner than later, acting a bit less upon it, releasing some of that contraction by simply taking a deep breath and with a long exhalation, relaxing the muscles and softening the attitude. Enjoying the softness, acknowledging the difference in these in a way, almost opposite ends of the scale. Trying hard and just detaching as we allow things to be as they are. So how do we practice asana? Do we continue running after an altered state of consciousness in our meditation practice, trying to kind of get high and feeling that special fleshy state? Or can we give ourselves a moment to just observe things as they are? Witness with detachment. Smiling at this personal constriction and tightness and just breathing through it, softening and enjoying stillness and peace. Give it a try and experience the difference in your own life. And then Evaluate, draw your conclusions, and maybe cultivate some different attitudes than the habitual, repetitive, pushy mindset. Allow yourself to be at peace. Best wishes for your journey back home into the heart.